SVG5 EZH here. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a quick review and a tutorial on how to program the Kenwood TK805D. And uh, it's a great little radio. I certainly like it. And so for starters, I'm going to do a quick size comparison. Uh, when I first saw pictures of this on the internet, uh, you know, I thought it was a lot bigger than it actually is. So, you know, it's only about the size of a standard Sharpie. Uh, and you know both ways and so yeah it's, it's pretty small from what I had uh, envisioned and uh, you know it, it's a commercial radio but it can tune down on the handbands and that's the fun part so uh, for starters let's take this case uh, the, the top cover off of here and I'm just gonna go ahead and take it off and we'll be right back okay we're back here as you can see, I've already taken the top cover off. Right there, just got two little screws. You pop out, just pop the cover off, and you're good. So I'm just gonna set that to the side. I'll grab the radio. Now you see you have a speaker here. I'm just gonna grab the speaker and gently move it over to the side. Hold it with the thumb. All right, just, just, set it. just don't mess up the wires. What you want to do? Gently grab the speaker mount and just pull that right off. Set that to the side, and pretty much good to go. Now, try to let the camera focus there. Okay, now as you can see, the C and 8, the letters, and you have two arrows. And to the right it says Use, and to the left it says Set. Now that's underneath this wire right there. You can see it just barely. And it says Set to the left. So, uh, it's obviously, well, not obviously, it's talking about this pin right here. See, uh, there's three little wires sticking out, and there's a little jumper, and you're going to put that jumper on one of these two. Uh, it's to, if you want to change the frequencies, or just program it from the front panel, you're going to want to have this pin on the left. So you're going to grab some tweezers, or uh, needle nose pliers and you should put that on the your two left pins if it's not already done for you and that's going to put your radio in the set mode <coughs> so just going to grab the speaker mount put that right back in there oh that's the wrong way pop the speaker mount back in oh gently set the speaker on there and uh, I'm just going to pop this panel right off. It's a little bit tricky. It's mine. Uh, funny story on mine. Uh, I bought it on eBay for about $75. It's a pretty decent price for these things. And it looked like somebody had squished it with something. So there's a big dent in there. We kind of pulled the dent out. But, you know, it works. And that's the important thing. <coughs> so, oh, let's show you the microphone. Well, here it is. This is the one that came with it. Uh, I don't think this is the original microphone that they actually shipped it with. I think it's just uh, the one the guy sent me, sent me with it. But I, I definitely like that it matches the radio. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty nice fit in the hand. And it's got a nice uh, clicky feel on this. The button, the push to talk button. Yeah, it's, I really like it. It's got a cord. And just the standard plug for this radio. Just plug it right in. There you go. My plug's a little loose, but I don't know, that's probably just my radio. So, I'm just going to turn on the power supply. Just give it a second to warm up. Just a little bit. Uh, now, to, to program it, you're going to want to start off by uh, putting your fingers on the aux button and the D slash A button. It's right in the corner. So you're going to want to hold those both down and you're going to turn it on. You're going to hold it until you hear that beeping noise. That means you're in the programming mode so that the radio, and uh, you can set the frequencies. And I'm just going to prop it up here on a Altoids 10 real quick. Maybe you can see it better. I should get that display up a bit. Okay, now uh, you can see that it's on 445, uh, you know, it can, it can tune down to the handbands. And so this is your receiving. Your, the first thing that comes up is your receiving, and if you can see there, it's channel 1. 
so you have your receiving channel uh, frequencies and this is moving in 10 kilohertz right here so uh, you know that, that's not that efficient if you want to change 4-4, four, four, uh, if you want to get your megahertz changed, you're going to be cranking on here for a long time. So I'm going to show you a quick uh, tip. I'm going to press the aux button, or actually hold it, and then you're going to turn your, uh, your little adjuster here. That'll move you in megahertz. So that can be really helpful. You just take it off, and you're back to kilohertz. Um, <clears throat> if, uh, you can do 10 kilohertz at a time. You press the scan button, and we'll move it in 12.5, I believe. Yeah. You see the little decimal point on the end? It's kind of hard to see, but that'll let you know that you're at 0.5. So just take it off of that real quick. And there you go. Uh, then you're going you're gonna to have the, the mic, and you're, when you're done setting your receive frequency, you have to push the talk button. Then you'll have your receiving tone, uh, which I don't use, and you have your transmitting frequency see the little arrow here that'll let you know if you're transmitting when you actually key the mic on the radio and this will tell you that you're in the transmitting frequency as well so you just set that same thing supply so then when you're done with your transmitting frequency just click the push to talk button let's use your transmit <coughs> tone sorry and uh, right now it's in the off mode but if you're going to use a repeater or you know if you're just messing around you can turn it and it'll have digital and just tone out. Uh, just pick up which one you're going to use. I choose the first one. And you're going to click it, and this will give you the um, the correct tone on here. And I think if you hold the aux button, and you turn it, it moves it a little faster. So that this will set your tone for you. And then uh, see here, just yeah, it, it can't be turned off in this menu. You're going to have to go back. And you can't go back, you have to start the whole process over again. And so we're just going to say that's our that's our tone. And then we'll move the channel 2. And just keep going through here. Some random frequency I have, pl have plugged in. You see, uh, I don't have any uh, channels on here. And so it's going to say 9. And it's just blank. So just keep going. And you have some of these things. Uh, there's some random numbers here and some letters. I think those are just used for cloning purposes or uh, maybe some programming things that you have to use your computer for. So you're going to keep going until you get end. And that'll let you know that you're done. So you're just going to turn the radio off. Turn it back on again. See, so you have channel 1. You can just go through all of them here. And then it's a handy little beep once you know you reach the end of your frequency so if you have it installed in the car or you're just not looking at it you can just twist and you can you'll know that you've hit the end of your uh, your channels so uh, we'll talk about the front buttons well you have your power button obviously you have this is a, it's a little microphone with a little slash a little uh, some lines there and you're gonna just press that down and just press it once sorry about that uh, but <laughs> that uh, that takes your your squelch off, so you can actually hear the noise. And uh, then you have your aux button, your record button, your scan, and your DA. Now these don't do much, if anything, for, uh, from what I can tell. I think uh, that you need to use uh, most of it's for a special recording setup. These had uh, for commercials kind of hard to find but if you have it you can press record if it's plugged into the back here there's a little outlet I'll show you later but you just press the record button and it'll record like 30 seconds of your receiving um, that's a, that's about it for the front panel so I'm gonna go ahead and turn around back here just turn it off <coughs> uh, yeah better turn this off and I'll be right back alright we've turned around and I'm going to proceed to show you the back. Uh, focus there. Okay. We have a little label on the back. It just says UHF FM transceiver uh, TK805D with a DC 13.6 volts at 7.5 amps. And just some more little serial numbers and model numbers. Uh, and on the far right here, we have the power cable. Uh, I cut the little mobile connector off and added some wire to get rid of the power supply. 
and then un right underneath that you can see a little hole there it's, it's kind of hard to see under the wires and the lighting but you can see it and uh, well I don't have any headphones with me or anything that uses that kind of jack but you can actually stick in a speaker a small speaker or your headphones or uh, possibly a headset but it is oh, mono only so you won't get that stereo so it's one headphone only or one speaker and then right under the back there, that's the antenna connector. Uh, connector. That one's a little bit dirty, but you know it works. This was used in in a com the commercial uh, setting, so it was actually used in a vehicle. And we'll just talk about a couple things real quick: signal reports, uh, quality of the radio. It's a really nice radio. It's pretty rugged. It's <laughs> really hard to break. And uh, a lot of people like these, and you can just tune it on the hand bands, and it'll actually go through the commercial bands, the GMRS, the MURS, and uh, it's, it's a great little radio. I've gotten really good signal reports from the mic, and th the audio is great on this little speaker here. Uh, you probably don't even have to have an external speaker. If you want to add one, that's great. Uh, headphones, you know, that's great too. Uh, you can also program it from this little uh, port here, you can buy a programming cable on eBay and you can clone it, do some stuff with that. So this is a great little radio, if you want to buy it, I highly recommend it. Just a programming video, because I know a lot of the other programming videos on this thing are kind of hard to and, uh, just understand and they don't flow that well. Well, this is KG5EZH, signing off.